I feel like for him to have, he's kind of produced this character in his 30s that I agree with you, Joe. It's really nice. You know, he seems comfortable, nothing to prove. And in fact, he seems very confident. It's almost like you know, he's a half a decade or so further down the line of where Kolohe is at, ironically, um, where, you know, the industry kind of, you know, he's been in the, the limelight for so long. The waves are shreddable, uh, and it's you know smaller barrels. So it'll be interesting to see how he does in his lineup. We'll get things started with the South African. Wave spits behind him. Jordy Smith, big backside blow off the lip there. And a carve under the soft shoulder. He'll get a score for the first wave of the morning. Now locking in the surfer from Kauai, Sebastian Seats. Comes out with the spit. Wrapping cut back to seal the deal. And Zietz is going to be frothing after that one, filled with adrenaline. We saw him warm up all morning, but that's definitely his best wave of the day. What do you love about the setup here? Well, you know, first of all, he commanded the lineup, which I thought was interesting. He, he held himself deepest in the lineup, so he said, boys, I'm going to take the best first wave of the heat, and it paid off for Sebastian. You know, sometimes you can get stuck up there pretty far up the reef, but it really paid off for him. This wave had a nice south direction on it, Joe and it stayed open for him. So a pretty easy barrel for you know this level of a surfer. Uh, you know It wasn't a sketchy, gnarly barrel. It was more of a, a joyride for Sebastian. That being said, he got nice and deep right there. He probably touched the foam for a second, and the judges will take note of that. It should be a good score. Ross, talk about the mobility that Sebastian had with that rock and roll motion while he held the rail. Ashton Zietz has been around for quite some time now. He's uh, surfed in 72 events as we look at a backhand car for Jordy Smith. Wide open face to set that rail again. And that one's just going to fade off into the channel. Two clean backhand turns for Smith, who's looking for more of a lip line there. So many little tiny nuances as Ross could probably add to. We'll see if Jordy gets something here. He's going to look for a little tube time himself. Thank you, Waz. Into a small inside pit with Smith. He's down. Priority with Matahi Drole. Finally making a move for his first wave of the morning. Local boy hits it off the first section. Trying to play catch up here. Taps it off the lip. Out in front of the open face. There's the wrapping turn. And now kicking out towards that end section that goes completely dry. So he's on the board. Jolay now with 27 minutes to really try to find something to open up for him. Let's see what happened on the first turn. You saw him stall for just a half a second when he took off uh, looking for the barrel. And then he realized that that way was too mushy. You know, it, it did not barrel. As Strider said it a second ago, you know, there's a lot of south in this swell right now. So it's kind of rolling down the reef. Uh, had he converted right away in terms of, uh, you know, train of thought, he could have killed this way. He could have really ripped into it and did two or three really big turns and maybe manufactured a seven that way. But uh, I think that was just uh, seeing someone right there being stuck with thinking, I want to get barreled. And it just didn't pay off that time, Joe. Tough angle here as you see that south angle really stretch out on him and didn't really get a dynamic section to really belt that lip off the top. It'll come in at a 2.5 for this wave. Yeah, and, and again, I feel like this wave was pretty rippable. You know, if he would have took off thinking, I'm going to kill this wave, he, he could have produced at least a five, something like that. But he just kind of tagged the lip a couple times. He was, you know, um, he was behind the section. Third priority, he's got to get out of there. Smith will take it off him and get some room inside the pit. Great exit, using all that speed. And now going to turn, some power pack off the top for Jordy. And he'll step off. So you see that like really long line in the barrel just showing how that angle is really south and using that veteran knowledge, knowing he had priority over Matahi to capitalize on that way. Maybe he did cut down just a bit in the barrel, but that was a tricky barrel ride, Joe. It was really small, it was kind of almond shaped. It wasn't that big square barrel that you want to just sit in. Uh, so technical tube rides, nice snap there for Jordy. He's gonna be able to surf today. They have to call the event off. And lo and behold, Annie just dominated all day and kind of showed everyone, like, wow, I guess it is possible. we got to get out there. What a great flashback. Andy, a big inspiration for this man. Sebastian Zietz gets piped and then drills that rebound section on the roundhouse, but let's go of it. So sat a while wisely with the 7-3-3. That'll be his backup score, 10 25 to go. Didn't have to cram himself in there. Look at this thing, kind of stayed open. You saw him let go, 
kind of dragged his front knee there for a second to stall, and then the wave was, was, it was actually so hollow, he, he was able to enjoy it. Watch his front knee. He's going to drag and then let it go. So, you know, it's pretty deep. He rode over the foam for a second. It's a little unfortunate he didn't make that wrap, so um, I, it's all going to be, the score's going to be based on the barrel. But he was deep, wasn't he, Joe? So cool to, to see what you picked out there. Using the body to slow down, just perfect timing to come out. To back up the 7.33, one of the better combined totals we've had in the last two days. Rolling into this one, wild card, Matahi Drole is going to end up underwater with that section landing on him. Now 8.20, Matahi probably trying to think of a game plan to pose a comeback to make this wild card appearance stretch out a bit further. Back in the barrel with Seabass. Pops out the back, Smith's turn. Slamming on the brakes, sitting nice and solid with that line. He'll emerge free. Backhand wrap. Smith nails it. Going for a big rooftop float and now having to eject over the shallow reef. Yeah. Nice execution for Smith. Find this wave. And here we go, Jordy Smith. This one, a little more south in it, so it's drawing down the reef. It's not very square, so that I don't think the judges are going to get super excited about that, uh, that wave. But a nice busy work on the inside with the wrap and an off the lip. That's really going to add to the score. So this barrel was solid, good surfing from Jordy. He sat in it, but the barrel was really easy. And the judges, you know, they won't get too lit up about that. But the, the off the lip on the inside was committed. It was on the dry reef. So it's definitely going to add to his score. Love that positioning from Smith. This is where he adjusted the maneuvers. Pretty risky going for a float like this. Yeah, I didn't see it coming. I thought Jordy was going to kick out, and uh, he just calls for it. It's it's not like these guys are, whoa, look at this one. Better wave for Matahi Jolay. The wild card pulls into a solid section. Oh, 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 He'll oh. emerge free and set up the wrapping cutback. And after about 30 minutes, that's what the local boy was waiting for. Nothing crazy, but... This is what I wanted to see. Look at the shape. Now we're looking at Chopu. And that's where Matahi is so talented. You see him stall on the bottom turn right there. Both hands dragging as he's bomb turning. That's just that natural gifted like surfing for hours and hours out here at Chopu. You do all these funny odd little stalls to get in the barrel. Chopu is a technical tube ride and it's short. So you need to do these these funny little subtle stalls to get yourself in the pit. It's a wild card made the final with another wild card, Bruno Santos. Here's Matahi again, getting spit out. And now just kicking out of the inside corner. So back to back two brides for the young Tahitian. Definitely a tough score for Matahi, but he's got a chance. And now setting this one up is Jordy Smith. Tight section to try to punch through Smith. We'll get taken down on that inside one footer. See if uh, something happens here, but it looks like Seabass is going to get it. Seabass with priority will lock into a hollow section. Enjoying that ride, shoved out with a foam ball, and Zietz will celebrate an incredible heat performance. First thing in the morning here at the Tahiti Pro Chopu, presented by Hurley, opened up with a 7.33. Backed it up with a 6.0 <laughs> and uh, kicks out of a barrel for that last wave. Uh, one of the really well-executed heats for Seabass this year. Yeah. Brilliant performance. Smith happy to survive against Matahi Jolay. Because <laughs> a lot of world title dreams have been really taken away from uh, the world's best at this venue. Yeah, I mean, he, that was close. Uh, but, uh, Matahi did make a few little mistakes there. So he'll watch that heat back and, and hopefully he'll learn. And maybe he can get in the event next year.